Today's reading is from Acts, and we're reading chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, whose name translates as Dorcas. She was full of good works and generous deeds. Around that time, she fell ill and died. They washed her and laid her in an upper cha chamber. Lydda was near Joppa, and the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the urgent request that he shouldn't delay, but come to them at once. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the upper room, where all the widows were weeping. They showed him the tunics and the other clothes that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter requested all of them to leave. Then he knelt down and prayed and turned to the body. Tabitha, he said, get up. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and lifted her up. Then he called God's people, including the widows, and presented her alive. This became known throughout the whole of Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in, on in Joppa for some days at the house of Simon the Tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we open up the scriptures, let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. But we thank you that you moved through your Holy Spirit, through disciples throughout the ages. We thank you that you still move through us. We pray now that we will hear your voice in word and in scripture and that we may be inspired to further your kingdom. Amen. I don't know if there is something that has stood out for you in your life that a fellow Christian or a fellow person has done. Just a small or simple act, maybe it's a cup of tea at the right time or a phone call or a text, maybe it's a dropping round of a meal. No obligations. Nothing that expected from it, just an act of generosity or an act of kindness. I don't know if there's one thing that sticks out in your mind or in your head. Throughout my Christian life, there's been many different ones and different activities that have stood out. Acts of kindness, small acts of generosity, ones or words that people don't really mean, or, or, well, people mean, but don't really understand the meaning of them. And we're going to explore those type of things uh, later on. Today's scripture is from the book of Acts, as uh, we are in the resurrection season, the time after Jesus was re resurrected, and we move towards Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit across the globe. And in that time, we will spend some time praying thy kingdom come as well. Luke, in his writing in the book of Acts, takes us from the macro that has just happened back into the micro, into the intimate, to the small, or into the less important. In the previous chapters, if we'd have read them, you, we would have seen about the earth-shattering, earth-changing conversion of Saul to Paul and what that meant for the uh, church in Jerusalem. And now we take a shift back and focus again on Peter, recognising that he was still journeying. He was still doing what God's mission was being called to do. He was still showing signs of the kingdom out and about. In our reading today, we read of the rising of Tabitha or Dorcas. But if we read a few verses back, we also see and read the hearing of Aeneas with one healing leading to another. Peter was in Lydda where he, held, uh, where he healed Aeneas. And not from from there, about 10 miles was the place of Joppa, the place of this morning's reading. So Peter's presence, his healing miracle, 
spread in the area. So it was, and people were turning to the Lord. So it was no surprise that the Christians of the nearby places, the disciples of the nearby places, heard what Peter was doing and knew that he was there. And that's why they called him to back to Joppa, even though Tabitha was dead. And don't you think the request for Peter to come to Joppa and the request for his presence indicates that the disciples in Joppa anticipated that there was something he could do, something he could do to help Tabitha even though she was dead. It is an atmosphere of anticipation and that anticipation facilitates a miracle or facilitates the miraculous. And we need that anticipation that God is going to do a miraculous thing through us and through our church, through the building and through our Christian community that the miraculous happens and lives are changed. You see, Luke often juxtaposes a story about a male character with that of a female character throughout his gospel and throughout Acts, but places normally much more emphasis on this chapter, on this, on Tabitha versus Aeneas, whereas normally it's the other way around. Luke offers so much more details about Tabitha, about her status as a believer, about her name in Aramaic and Greek, about her commitment to good deeds and the community's response to her dead. The imperfect verb used in this verse, a pi, in 36, in verse 36, suggests that Tabitha was consistently and constantly involved in the ministering of uh, ministering to others. A literal translation of that verse reads like this. She was full of good deeds and arms, which she continually did. As Christians, if we are awake and aware of a situation, we must act. We are called to act. We are called to call out the injustices of our society and our world, but not only called to call them out, but also to act to stop them. When we are aware of people going hungry, we can't let them. When we are aware of people being lonely, we have to come alongside them. When we are aware that our climate is in danger and is being destroyed, we have to do something. If we are aware, and then we have to act. And you see, Tabitha was aware of the widows, the cast out of the society that she was living in. Those who were uh, sidelined because they had no husband and were probably on those edges of society because they had no means of sustenance and sustaining themselves. And she was doing something. She had created a community of widows. She had ministered to them. She had loved them. And that's why Peter was there. And they were showing Peter what she had done and the transformation she has made in their lives. And so it was no surprise that because of the community that she had built around her, that she had ministered to, they were the ones with Peter in the room showing all that Tabitha had meant to her, to them, and all good that she had done. And you see, once we become aware of a malign society, once we know about it, it's not good enough to simply know it's imperative that we too act to improve those conditions of those who are suffering. Our actions can be the difference between life and death. Our actions, the food that we give out through our food bank can be the difference between going hungry and eating. 
the difference that you make by donating to those transforms people's life. And you will see and recognize the pattern of the rising of Tabitha. It is one that will be familiar to you because it shares the same pattern of the rising of Jairus's daughter in Luke's Gospel by Jesus. And if you remember, Peter was actually there when Jesus raised Jairus's daughter. And just like Jesus did, Peter was called to the place by people who were concerned and worried about the loss of their loved one. He assessed the situation. He sent everyone out of the room. He prayed and then commanded Tabitha to get up. He didn't just say, Tabitha, why don't you get up? He said, rise in the name of Jesus. And in taking the time to pray before he did that, it reminds us, the audience, reading and looking on, that Peter was not acting in his own stead. He was acting in God's power. She is told to arise and then is taken out of the house to the friends and the family and the neighbours to see her. Miracles uh, may be performed in private, but they are not to be hidden away. They are publicly displayed to all. When a miracle happens, when someone is touched by God, whether it is in the privacy of their own home or in the intimacy of worship. When something miraculous happens, they talk about it. They say, look what God has done. And then those miracles of what God has done is publicly displayed to the whole world. And just like in Peter's time, many came to believe in the miraculous that Jesus still does and God still transforms today, many still come to believe. But what's our role in those? What do we do in that moment? How can we do and be part of that miraculous? You see, when my daughter's watching TV or reading the news and, and seeing things, and people get recognized for things that they've done through the pandemic, maybe helped the hungry or, or visited people. And they get um, uh, picked out on TV for awards or um, uh, rewards, you know, like vouchers and, and things like that. There, there's something in her that says, but you do that, Daddy. Why don't you get nominated? You have been doing that or, or did the same thing and I have to say to her that, you know, maybe no one has nominated me or the other volunteers in the church. Or maybe it's just not seen as something that is big enough to be rewarded or awarded. And obviously we, you know that I don't do it because of that. Um, and I don't look for that recognition in any way. But I also say to her, that it may not be big enough to be recognized by wider people but to the people here the people who receive the food parcels the people <coughs> who are touched by our church and our volunteers in many different ways it is more than significant to them and it is life changing to them and that's the thing that matters you see, the focus on Dorcas or Tabitha and her ministry to the giving to the widows and the marginalized remind us that there would have been hundreds, if not thousands of people doing the similar things that she was doing. The unsung her heroines or heroes of the Bible who were changed through their relationship with God and the risen Jesus Christ and made aware of a plight somewhere and responded and they went through their life not recognized by by others but just using their skills to point the glory to God in those places and making a difference to those people that they minister with 
Tabitha wasn't recognised as a deacon in her church, but did the works anyway. And we can still do those works. It is the we and not me. It is the we of the church, the we of the Christian community on King's Hill, not just the church leaders. And I have to say, I'm so thankful that the congregation still continue to minister whilst I was on sabbatical at outreach programs, uh, food banks, uh, harb, our uh, toddler groups still continue to minister. The girls' brigade, the church ministry, all of that still continued. They're looking after one another because it's the we and not just the me. And you see, it's in this passage that it's an important reminder to us that it's the small things, the little things that make a difference. And that is the heart of the church. The small things, the little things that make that difference to others, to individuals, to our church congregation. That builds up the church. And we read all through Christian history of those unsung heroes doing the small things, transforming lives and transforming communities. And we and you are those unsung heroes. You are the ones who are doing God's hands and being God's hands and Jesus' feet in this place, transforming lives. It is the we and not just the one. It's the ordinary people who are not ordinary to God. They are extraordinary to him. They are the ones who tell the story of God in every community, in every place. They are the people who are remembered and build the kingdom of God in places around the world. Yes, there are people at the forefront of these things, those who stand up front, those who talk about them, but there are the ones who little by little make small and significant differences and build the kingdom of God every hour, every minute, every day. Some do that publicly, some do that because they are Christian in secular environments and some just do that because they love God and they know God is calling them to do. And you see within our church, within our ministry, every chair that's put out, every coffee made, every stitch that is cast, every phone call that is made, every time that we sit down to listen and chat, every time a prayer is written and said, every Bible that is opened, every hour sat preparing or working with children and young people, and every can of beans that is donated to the food bank. They all may seem small and insignificant acts, but as they add together, they build a picture of God's kingdom and church here on King's Hill and they create significance to those within the church and outside of the church who are on the end of those small and silent acts. They transform lives, you transform lives, even though in the grind of it, in those times where it feels so hard and why are we doing it is nothing happening. God is in them and we are changing lives and we are making a difference and we are building God's kingdom. And it is us who do that. It is our everyday gifts that build the Christian community and the kingdom of God that is recognised in this passage and that we celebrate here. The widows were reached out to and the widows were called. When we reach out, those people are called and respond. As the news spread of what Peter had done, many believed in the Lord. So we need to again tell the stories of what God has done in our lives, what God has done through the church, what God is doing through St. Gabriel's and through the small acts that we do. So you see, as we talk about our faith to others, then the name of Jesus is proclaimed and the news of Jesus and our church spreads and many will come to believe. 
although what we may do is in secret, as we tell of the deeds publicly and the miraculous are displayed. So take heart that those things that you feel are insignificant are in fact significant. Take heart that as we, as a church, that we can't stand back and watch suffering, that we are stepping up and making a difference in the lives of our community and lives of the world. Take heart that as you, as an individual, and we as a church are making a big impact in the lives of others. And it is you who are doing it. It is you who are leading others to Christ. And as we do that, our church is built and the kingdom of God is built in this place through Jesus our Saviour. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to come together this morning and to worship, learn, share, fellowship and pray together. Thank you for Mark, Kirsty and Bella being back with us after Mark's sabbatical. May you continue to lead and guide Mark in all you have laid on his heart and for the plans for your church here at Kings Hill. Continue to equip and motivate him in his ministry and the direction of your church here. Lord, we continue to lift to you this crazy world. Still the suffering goes on and on in Ukraine and we cry out for a resolution there and elsewhere in the world. It seems incredulous that what we see and hear in the news we long for the perpetrators to have their hearts and minds transformed into ones of peace and restoration. We hear in your word this morning how miracles can happen and we so long to see them happening in our suffering world today. Bring forth your power, justice and healing grace. Change hearts from violence to compassion, we pray. Father, we pray for the rising living costs in our country and for all that entails. We commit to you all those facing financial hardship and those struggling to feed and provide roofs over heads. We pray for the many charities and food banks, including our, ours here at Kings Hill, and we ask for your blessing on them. Lord, we lift to you those known to us who are in any kind of need, those who are ill, those who are mourning, those facing family breakdowns, those young people facing important exams, the marginalised and isolated, and those in any other kind of difficulty. In a moment of quiet, let us name those known to us who are struggling May you strengthen, comfort and equip them in the midst of their suffering and may you wrap your arms of safety, love and compassion around them. Father, when we see so much suffering in our news and world, it's sometimes hard not to lose hope and we doubt your faithfulness. Help us to see the many positive things, experiences, conditions, and people around us. Open our eyes, hearts and minds to your goodness and blessings. Help us to appreciate your amazing creation and all nature has to offer us. Help us to appreciate our friends and family and the friendship and love we share. We thank you for all your provisions and open our eyes to the value to value the freedom we have in this country and to not take it for granted. Lord, cultivate in us grateful and appreciative hearts and to daily be thankful. Please be with us this coming week and may we know your power, grace and love. 
Father God, we leave these requests with you and we trust in your faithfulness. Amen. And we conclude our time of prayer by saying the words that Jesus taught us in the form of the Lord's Prayer. We pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Well, amen.